Hi, good morning. This is Srinivas Alwala, working as assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, SR Engineering College, Varangal, Telangana, India. Welcome you to the presentation on data link control. Before we see what is a data link control of the data link layer, let us know the course objectives firstly. Objectives are under students understand need of framing understand types of frame framing and need of flow and error control understands different protocols used at the data link control and the course outcomes are at the end of the course the students will understand how framing is done and need of fit in networks knows the problems relating with flow and error in transmission of frames knows different types of protocols to control flow and error illustrates protocols and their usage with respect to implementation scenario framing the data link layer needs to pack bits into frames so that each frame is distinguishable from another our postal system practices a type of framing the simple act of inserting a letter into an envelope separates one piece of information from another the envelope serves as the delimiter the framing is of two types one is fixed size framing and variable sizing if at all framing is of fixed size there won't be any problem of sending a frame over a network a frame in a character oriented protocol data from the upper layer is taken and the data link layer assigns a header and a trailer and a flag at the end this flag is used as a delimiter of the frame and byte stuffing and unstuffing the frame the data from the upper layer taken and used a flag is used that flag is used and if at all the flag which can be repeated as a part of the data is a question then before the flag an escape is used escape sequence is used this escape sequence tells the that flag which has been a part of a data is not a flag it is a part of the data and there is one more question if at all the escape itself is the part of the data then a double escape is used as shown in the picture byte stuffing is a process of adding one extra byte whenever there is a flag or escape character in the text a frame in a bit oriented protocol a data from the upper layer is taken variable number of bits and a header and a trailer is as a app added as a part of the data link layer and a flag is added at the end ends of the frame that is the flag here is 0111110 and if at all the flag comes as a part of the data there is a question how it is going to be understand whether it is starting or the ending of the frame here the question comes that if at all the flag is repeated in the part of the data as yes, bit stuffing is a process of adding one extra zero whenever five consecutive ones follow a zero in the data five consecutive ones follow a zero in the data so that receiver does not make mistake the pattern of zero zero triple one triple one zero for a flag bit stuffing and unstuffing we see the example if at all a flag is used and if at all a flag is a part of the data immediately after the five consecutive ones there will be a zero added so that the receiver is not going to mistake the pattern for a flag flow and error control the most important responsibilities of the data link layer are flow and error control collectively these functions are known as data link controls data link controls flow control refers to the set of procedures used to restrict the amount of data at the sender can send before waiting for acknowledgement error control in the data link layer is based on the automatic repeat request which is the retransmission of data protocols now let us see how the data link layer can combine framing flow control and error control to achieve the delivery of data from one node to the another the protocols are normally implemented in the software by using one of the common programming languages to make our discussions language free we have written in pseudo code a version of each protocol that concentrates mostly on the procedure instead of dwelling into the details of the language rules taxonomy of protocols discussed in this chapter or the protocols for the data link control are broadly categorized into two types they are for noisy channels and noiseless channels as of now 
we just go for seeing a noiseless channel but in real time in the real implementation part of the network communications it is very rare and mostly I can go for saying that we can't go for finding a channel which is noise free so for a noiseless channels we have the two simple protocols called as the simplest protocol and the stop and wait protocol and for noisy channels we have the three protocols here they are the stop and wait automatic request protocol go back and automatic request protocol and selective automatic re repeat request protocol and for the noisy channels we now we go for seeing the protocols only for the noiseless channels as a part of this data link control as of now so noiseless channels let us first assume we have an ideal channel in which no frames are lost or are duplicated or corrupted we introduced two protocols for this type of channel they are the one simplest protocol stop and wait protocol the design of the simplest protocol with no flow or no error control we take the diagram as an example a sender and a receiver where the sender sends a data or the frame carrying out from the network data link and the physical layers which sends by making use of a transmission media to the receiver assuming that there is no choice over the trans no noise over the transmission media as the simplest protocol is that the stream of data packets is going to be sent from a sender to the receiver and which is going to be repeated over the data communication part as long as the sender sends the data and the receiver goes on receiving the data assuming that there is no noise over the channel flow diagram for example of the noisy ch noiseless channel of a simplest protocol where the request is made by the sender and the frame is sent to the receiver and the frame is arrived as long as the data is going to be communicated from one end to the another end without any interruptions design of stop and wait protocol the sender and the receiver go for sending and receiving the data and the sender sends a frame and the receiver receives the data and uh, acknowledges for the received frame acknowledges for the received frame. the sender waits for a certain amount of time that is the we call it as a retransmission timeout RTO as within the stipulated amount of time if at all a sender doesn't go for getting an acknowledgement from the receiver sender retransmit the same frame to the receiver this all happens only on a noiseless channel the two protocols what we have seen simplest and the stop and wait are as a part of the noiseless channels and here a sender requests the frame and arrival and acknowledges the frame for the arrival of the frame and then the sender sends another frame and waits for an acknowledgement and as soon as the acknowledgement is received by the sender again one more frame is sent to the receiver and if at all the sender is not going to receive an acknowledgement within a stipulated amount of time what we call it as an RTO retransmission timeout the sender retransmit the same frame to the receiver